station of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are One of the beauties of baseball is the art of scoring the game. And tonight, we'll take you through some of the Rays' greatest moments using the scorebook and turning them into teachable moments, instructing the youngsters the process of scoring the game. Ready for baseball on a Thursday night as the Rays take on the New York Yankees, hoping to salvage one game in this series. They did it to the Yankees in the final game of the four game set up in the Bronx, where they won the last game of the series to avoid the sweep. Rays hoping for the same tonight with Blake Snell on the mound at Tropicana Field against Luis Sessa. It is uh, the Yankees at two and a half games back in the wild card picture starting play tonight with a week and a half to go in the season. Todd Callis alongside of Reston Estrada. What are we doing out here at the Budweiser <laughs> porch? Tonight's show is all about scoring the game of baseball. We're going to teach you at home if you've never kept score of a baseball game or even if you have kept score and want some new tips about scoring the game. And oh, right now we have a blank slate. I just started with the Rays lineup, but uh, this is how it starts. It will look vastly different as we continue. It, it will. And obviously with the Rays, you got availability of a lot of different numbers. The Yankees, you get kind of thwarted. The, the lower numbers are gone. But one of the things that I, I find fascinating for those veterans like yourself, you know, obviously your, your father, uh, Harry, taught you quite a bit as a youngster. And, and, and the, you know, legendary Dwayne Satz who keeps cool, you know, score. It's the story that it tells as it develops. I mean, I think the nuances that you add kind of help you tell your own story later on and maybe explain it to yourself or to to other people as uh, as uh, years pass in a particular game these two spots we've hit been able to show a lot of home runs oh. during the during the season one two and what the next guy you're going to show right there have been a three pack I hadn't seen that in a lot of years down here for the Tampa Bay race but we have what we've seen this year with this team is 36 home runs most home runs versus the Yankee team and it's come mostly for these two monsters that was number 29 for Brad about you Miller and then he goes out and hits another one later on for a 30th but this is the most impressive home run for me in that third inning and that was the kid Corey Dickerson and he hit a split finger down and away to hit it to center field for me was impressive and that goes to show you that maybe the next year when you're scoring like this you're going to be seeing not one not two but hopefully three 30 homer hitters and it'll be fun to see him right in the middle right there. I mean do you kind of key some guys as games develop sometimes to keep an eye on sometimes of what you're trying to remember or think about. Yeah no doubt about it. You, you put a little notes there just to remind yourself of where guys what a guys have done on the season. I uh, usually have their stats off to or two to the side but uh, as you can see this is the probably similar to what we're going to see next year with the core four being at the top and then Corey Dickerson Steven Souza Jr. Uh, as you mentioned Kirk Casale getting the start tonight behind the plate and then we have a new number number nine. Yes. I'm going to spell Uniel Caracuto during the commercial. <laughs> I don't think I could do it off the cuff. Well, first of all, it's long. It's very long. We're hoping to fit. A, he's making his major league debut tonight. When we come back, we're getting ready for Rays and Yankees baseball. He's also from Barrasquimiento, Venezuela. Oh, I'm not writing that in. Barrasquimiento, baby. Really? We're looking forward to a major league debut as we always do whenever a new player joins the Rays. We're less than six and a half minutes away from the first pitch. The Rays and the Yankees on a Thursday night coming up on Fox Sports Sun.
Race Baseball on Fox Sports Sun. Brought to you by Ram Trucks. Cuts Glory Ram. By Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. When cancer strikes, strike back with Cyberknife. By Furman, the Bay Area's first name in Chevrolet. And by your local Toyota dealers. Let's go places. The young lefty Blake Snell on the hill for the Rays, making his 18th start after his sixth win. He'll be opposed by the right-hander Luis Sessa. Rays and the Yankees coming up next. And the Yankees will wrap up this series. They'll conclude the season series tonight. And here is the lineup for the New York Yankees, presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Brett Gardner leads off, followed by Jacoby Ellsbury and Gary Sanchez. Billy Butler's the DH, hitting in front of Mark Deshera. Chase Headley in there in third. D.D. Gregorius in short. Aaron Hicks is in right field. Donovan Solano. Will hit ninth, and he will play second base. Those numbers there, starting with Gardner, there seven. That is his fielding position number, and that would be a seven in left field. You're going to want to sit back and enjoy here tonight. First pitch is a strike call to Gardner. Well, Blake Snell, a couple of starts left here in the season and making his 18th here tonight and wants to finish strong. And the key for him, we continue to talk about it, is filling up that strike zone, expanding from there. And a check swing. The count is one and one. You know, we talked a little bit in yesterday's pregame show about trusting your stuff. And I think that's the message that Jim Hickey delivering to Blake Snell. Trust your stuff. You can be in the zone with your stuff. And a base hit in the right to start this one. For New York, Gardner aboard. Starting this game the same way he started last night with a base hit in the right. 
An old 3-4 hole for Gardner. Let's look at the Rays defense. See how it's going to line up here tonight. Brought to you by Golden Diamond Source. And in the outfield, left to right, we have Dickerson, Kiermaier, and Matuk. And across the infield, third to first, Uniel Caracuto making his first start. Brad Miller, Logan Forsythe, and Richie Schaefer with Kurt Casale behind the plate. Yeah, you know what else I like about Uniel? As he was jogging out to his position, wearing the number nine, mm -hmm. niner. Been, been dying for a niner, <laughs> and Uniel's giving it to us. It's a soft. It's Jacoby Ellsbury. It's a soft, Jay. Yeah. That's why he was jogging out. He, he went jogging. Okay, gotcha. Make a note of that. One strike to count to Ellsbury. We saw some of. Uh, the third baseman Caracudo in spring training and divided the minor league season between Montgomery and Durham. And a liner being hit off the bat of Ellsbury into right. Montuk with the pickup throws back to second and there Miller to take the throw from Montuk but Gardner back in. And the first two men are on, so the Yankees, who started last night's game with a three run first by putting the first four men on, have back to back base hits in the first inning tonight. Nobody out for Gary Sanchez. Is down. Well, Sanchez hit two home runs last night. He has 19 and the most home runs in the first 45 career games in the major leagues, moving ahead of Wally Berger. Wally Joyner and Jose Abreu, each with 16. Sanchez now topping that list. And he's ahead in the count right here, 2 0. Oh. You know, and the one thing when you start to think about Gary Sanchez and the staying power is I know it's a 45 game, you know, look this season, but it was so hot early on. Then he starts getting pitched to and things slow way down. Then he gets hot again. You know, that adjustment game has been made by the pitchers, and then consequently, Gary Sanchez able to come back and make his own adjustment. And that's led to nights like this right here, all of that right there, just a mistake by Alex Cobb, pitch you'd like to have back, and then trying to climb the ladder is a pitch that's been very effective for the Rays. And Gary Sanchez having none of that. Yeah, he's showing it. You're going to climb the ladder. You would better be on the top or the second of the top rung of that ladder against him. Any lower could be trouble. That's right. I, I, he, he starts to close up his windows because that's how teams, when they started pitching him tough and his batting average started to slide down, he had a 10-game homerless streak it was above the zone and then soft stuff below the zone. Obviously nothing in the zone because he's been hammering those this whole season. That's a strike. Fastball will square the count at 2 2. Six game hitting streak with 13 runs batted in and five home runs. Normally you look at the average. But in this case, you look at the run production, which ultimately is what you're looking for anyway. And a swing and a miss. He is out on strikes. The big strikeout for Snell. So two men on, one out. Let's check in with Todd to update the scoring so far. All right, Dwayne, a, a lot of individual varieties of how you can keep score of the game. I, I personally use S or C, swinging or called for a strikeout. Some people go backwards or forwards K uh, just to start the game. Gardner with a single to right, and then Ellsbury followed a single to right. The eight up there indicates that Gardner moved to second base based on the hit by Ellsbury. Dwayne, how do you do strikeouts? Backwards, forwards? No, I keep uh, a, a C for called, and uh, I, I have always just put a two. Oh, ball gets away. And the runner goes down to third on the move up. So it'll be first and third. Ellsbury still at first as Gardner takes third. 
And now we wait for the scorer's decision. So it's either a wild pitch or a pass ball. Yep, scorer is saying it's a pass ball. Okay, pass ball, so PB. And I actually put the hitter who's at the plate at the time so you know when he advanced. And in this case, it's a pass ball while Butler, who's the designated hitter, 10, is at the plate, guys. All right, there it is. Well, getting away from Casale. Just mishandled. Gets away. Gardner very aggressive there as he saw that ball roll away. Moves up to third. See, I'd already be extremely confused with the scoring that's going on. And it's no wonder. I've already pointed out one area that I've made my mistake. I go forward backward with the K. Todd drops the PB-10. I would be thinking that that at the point that I would start to eat my peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I bring to the booth. It, it just, it would, it, it doesn't work for me. I could probably sit this one out here tonight. We'll check with you on occasion <laughs> just to see <laughs> if I wrote you anything are. down. <laughs> There's a strike and it's one and two. You're making me hungry though. Hey, listen, they, they've got some they've got some bread down in media dining. I don't yeah. know what it is. It's like a multi grain. Yeah. With their PB. Their P, Good. It, it's to die for yeah. as far as PB and J goes. A long way to go tonight. Thinking yep. about that. I'll make you one. <laughs> First and third with one out, a one two count on Butler, the DH. This one is down and covered up by Casale. On deck, Mark Teixeira. Well, the one thing we're finding out about keeping score is that it is highly individualized. A two two. And he chases that fastball up. Mid 90s on the fastball out of the zone. You know, he's able to come back and get. Billy Butler here right there that ball up near the shoulders. You're just not going to be able to get up to that pitch at the velocity in which Blake Snell throws it too high. And then you think about Gary Sanchez soft below spinning the curveball. You put yourself into those positions. Good things will happen and he's one out away from being able to work out of this tough start. Yeah you really don't think uh, of Billy Butler being on his tippy toes much but he needed to be to try to hit that pitch. Mark Teixeira. And that pitch is inside. Teixeira, 13 home runs this year, a couple off lefties. And he's tied with Duke Snyder on the all time home run list now. Off of a start off first by Ellsbury. The pitch is a strike. And you know what we've seen from Blake here tonight early on? You know, there have been some games where he has stayed with one pitch for far too long. Number of fastballs in a row, then breaking balls. But tonight he's he started to mix already. We've seen the fastball, of course. We've seen some curve balls. That right there was a change up. Close right there. I'll tell you, you'd love to have that pitch all night. And you should. Yep. You know, the thing is, is that Blake Snell on a couple of these fastballs has been squeezed. This is the latest right here. Knees, corner. Yeah, pitcher looks to be rewarded for that pitch. Popped up. Right side. Schaefer makes the call. And the catch to retire the side. Couple of base hits. Two men left. No score. We go to the bottom of the first.
well, and that's about where he is average. Actually, a little under what he's averaged so far this year per inning. Line up for the Rays, presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Logan Forsythe leads it off, followed by Kevin Kiermeyer and Evan Longoria is the DH. Brad Miller in short, and six out there by his name. Corey Dickerson, then Kurt Casale. Julio Caracudo is at third. Richie Schaefer at first, and Mikey Montauk in right field. Taking the mound tonight for the New York Yankees, right-hander Luis Sessa making his seventh start of the season. You can see he started out of the bullpen, eight appearances, moved into the rotation on August the 20th, and as a starter, two and two, 3.97 earned run average. It's the fastball there up and by Forsyth, one and one. The Yankee wide receiver can rush the fastball up there. Good velocity, but he will give up the long ball. So 14. He'll just swing and a miss in six starts and 14 overall appearances. Two balls, two strikes. Well, the Yankees very impressed with his arm, the 24 year old right hander out of Mexico. A converted infielder He's made that shift. And that's where, you know, pitching, pitchability, learning the nuances of being a pitcher comes into play. Great arm, no question about that. Into right field, Hicks coming in, and that ball going to drop. Wow. He must have lost that one. Oh, wow. Had a little trouble picking it up. Boy, it appeared he was going to make that play and put it in his back pocket, and all of a sudden, that just fell out of the sky on him. Watch the route. I mean, he's coming in. He's not showing any signs of not seeing that ball. That right there, a gift base hit. He'll take it. I don't know how that wasn't caught. Well, a base hit for Forsyth. One of the stranger base hits we've seen. Kiermaier shortens, pitches a ball. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it because typically, and we see it with visiting players here a lot during the course of a season, but when it, they can't pick it, you see a sign of it. You see the arms go out. You can see the hesitation. He was jogging right in after that ball and then just almost seemingly let it drop right in front of him. And a base hit through the right side for Kiermaier. Down to second, Forsyth. So the Rays put the first two men aboard here in the home half of the first. So two on with Evan Longoria coming to the plate. Todd? Well, Dwayne, I don't know. Again, you said it's very individualized. I don't know how you work it, but just to show there was a little air under that first base hit, I have a, like a little curve, so a little blooper, a little shaded towards right field, and then Kiermaier was on the ground a little harder. Do, how do you differentiate, uh, or do you, on a, on a little bloop hit versus a line drive? Yeah, I, I, I get into that little curve. Um, some are a little more pronounced than others, depending on the arc of the ball. And I tend to put it right over the middle of where I chronicle the hit. Here's Evan Longoria taking a big cut and missing. That's a strike. As a pitcher, I like to write uh, blue hit garbage should have been caught in my little box. <laughs> We're going to make the box a little bigger next time. <laughs> <laughs> and a liner down to first caught by Teixeira. Runners safely back in at their respective bases. That was positioning right there to share it well enough off the bag that he's able to get to that line drive. He's got some range, tall, lanky, and you see where he's playing. That ball most of the time is going to be between first and second, a base hit, but stationed well off the bag makes the play. Here's 
Brad Miller. Two home runs last night to get to the 30 mark. One ball, no strikes. Foul back and out of play. One and one to count. Well, let's take this moment to set the Yankee defense for you. Brought to you by Golden Diamond Source. And in the outfield, left to right, we have Gardner, Ellsbury, and Hicks. And across the infield, third to first, Chase Headley, Didi Gregorius, Donovan Solano, and Mark Teixeira. With Gary Sanchez behind the play. At the two position. There you go. See? Braves with a chance to break out in front. Ground ball through the left side. There's a base hit. Here comes Forsyth to the plate. He will score, and the Rays do break out in front. One nothing, Tampa Bay. Miller drives in his 78th run. Turned out to be a pretty good sized hole on the left side of the infield, and he found it. Uh, you're not expecting Brad Miller. If he's going to go the other way, I mean, the majority of the time, it's going to be in the air. This one on the ground, and it keeps Todd busy. Lots of numbers, lots of lines. We're all saying the same thing, just in different ways. So he doesn't color in. It's just if they, they come all the way around. There's no shading of foresight yep. as, as the run. Yep. You, you know why I don't, B.A.? No, well, I would love to. Here, uh, it, on, when I do these lines as to where the hits are, if there's an infield hit, I go like that. Oh. And then if I color it in, I never get to see it. Yep. So well, there. then, okay. Look at that. Yeah. I like it. See? It's a very logical mind we have. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Hey, I like B.A.'s <laughs> reference to the uh, 85 wide receiver. Four versus 85 pitching. Tonight, That's yeah, Brent, yeah, it's yeah. a Brett Favre to Greg Jennings uh, pitching matchup tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is the 1 0 big cut. Boy, he took a big swing in that way, Corey Dickerson. With the fastball up there in the uh, 96 97 range, and Dickerson trying to get it started in a hurry. Out of play. And it's a ball to two strikes. Rays have taken a one nothing lead tonight. Dickerson with his average back up to 243. Twenty two home runs for the Rays left fielder. And he is out on strikes. Sessa using the fastball. And challenging Corey up in the zone with some 96, 97 mile an hour heaters. You see where that one's at? Right just about the letters. Well, that's the pitch nowadays. And it doesn't matter sometimes if it's 96 or 97. We see Jake Odorizzi get the same swings, the same results with 91, 92. Get that pitch up close to the eyes, and hitters have a hard time laying off, especially when you have another group here. You know, in 16, the home run playing such a huge role this year. Boy, how home about runs that? And punch outs. Yep. That that has been the trend over the last few years, and we have seen it accelerate this year. That's a foul ball out of play. You know, and, and that's one of the reasons when, when you look at, for example, strikeout numbers of pitchers, it's hard to make a valid comparison to pitchers in the past. Yeah. Because strikeouts, because of the approach that hitters have, mm -hmm. it's a strikeout game more now. 
yeah, than you, it was in the past. No question. You, you think of those years where, you know, Nolan Ryan's running up 300 plus. Yeah. I mean, 300 plus, first of all, you, you can't even imagine anybody touching that nowadays, just innings pitched. But you've got, you know, a lot of guys with two out of, you know, two strike approaches. Yep. A lot of guys just trying to put the ball in play. You know, you, you wonder if you, if you took his stuff into the game now with the approaches now. Yep. I mean, where would it end up? Where would that number end up? Yeah, 400? I mean, <laughs> seriously. I mean, not even to exaggerate. Yep. The way that guys swing now, you may have one, maybe two guys in, a, in an, any given lineup that, that will change their approach with two strikes. Everybody else just free wheel hacks. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, you get a, 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 a true strikeout guy like he was with those kind of innings, and you wonder how many he would have ended up with. Yeah, it's a swing hard in case you hit it era so far. Miller's at first, Kiermaier's at third, a run home. But how many different guys, you know, the, the home number of home runs hit this year? It is an all or nothing offensive league right now. It's a foul ball. Spinning around down there, down the third base line. Hiracudo is on deck. He's playing third base tonight with Longoria, the DH. field Gardner will go back just short of the track and now just a foot on the track makes the catch Braves get a run we're through an inning and it's one nothing Tampa Bay. Out of the second, shirts off our backs for the Rays as return. Make a donation to the Rays Baseball Foundation and receive a scratch off card. You could win tickets to a 2017 home game or a jersey right off a player's back. Every card is a winner. So for details, go to RaysBaseball.com slash shirts. When you win, kids win. Here's Chase Headley leading off. First pitch is a fastball and a called strike. Headley starts the night hitting 257. He's been plagued by some lower back stiffness. Miller takes care of that a little sinking line drive off the handle. 
Headley is out of there. You know, and what you're hoping for, what you're anticipating, is that the way that Blake Snell was able to close out that first inning to start to build some confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at his numbers over his last seven starts coming into this one. He'd only thrown 26 and a third innings in seven starts. And so you want to see that confidence build towards the end of the season. Well, he comes into this game, base hit, base hit. Uh-oh, here we go again. No, no. He comes back with a couple of punch outs and a soft pop up. And you hope that he can just run from there. Yep, there's a fastball that just missed. And I'll tell you, the pitches he's missed with now three pitches that you could call a strike yep, on. Absolutely. So the misses, there's a little tap by the mound. Nice pickup, foresight, high throw. That's going to go into the dugout. And Gregorius is going to wind up at second base. Well, a great effort after that great pickup, but the throw. Will award Gregorius another base. And I want to see how Todd's going to score this one. Same with you, Dwayne, because here's going to be an infield hit by Gregorius. And then Logan Forsythe, trying to get more on the throw, ends up airmailing it into the dugout. So you got a base hit and an air, the same play. How does that one go down? It's got a single. And it depends on how you're going to, different people indicate singles and other hits in different ways put a single and an E4 on the uh, yeah on the advance to second so you advance him to second base on one play he doesn't stop at first he passes right by first and move to second on the E4 does he collect two hundred dollars <laughs> these days a lot more <laughs> Aaron Hicks a strike the count on him. So there's the book so far. You can see, let's see if we could get that that base hit down here. I put an S for base hit. Okay. And I do that because what we're doing here is about vocalizing the game. And so I, I'm going to put an S for single. I put a D for double and a T for triple. It just orients me verbally. I like that. I'll never do it because it would be so odd and foreign to me, but I, I get that. <laughs> yep. That that makes sense to me. And as Todd said early, and, and we have agreed, it's a it's a highly personal activity of scoring a game. I've always considered the traditional way a nice suggestion, and then you personalize it. Two two now to Hicks. They're little really reminders little cues for us you know as the games progress sometimes we will look back at an earlier part of the game and they're little reminders and little verbal cues that might kickstart a conversation and and quite frankly honestly that's where I rely on just upstairs mm -hmm. you remember that moment because if you went back and looked at my book there would be nothing to tell you that that happened. No conversation. Nothing <laughs> to tell you that that happened. I've got to, you know, you, there are certain things that I say that I'll remember later mm -hmm. and it'll trigger. Some things I, I'd like to take back, but it's too late. Well, that's what makes it so fun. <laughs> Full count now to Hicks. Right fielder hitting 214 on the year. Solano on deck. And that is strike three call. He got that call there. On three prior pitches, borderline pitches, he did not get the call. That one a little more off, and he did get this call. Well, uh, this is that old baseball that you're well aware of. Is sometimes it's who's in the box. Well, that's true. Some of the other pitches that he didn't get and who was hitting, 
and there was always that thought you're the rookie this is a veteran with a big resume and the borderline pitches eh, maybe maybe not Solano and a strike to him hey, that's part of the human element of this game that's why they've borne out statistically if the counts three and oh you're likely to get a strike call get it close mm -hmm. In on him, and he fouls it down the right side. And catch right there. Matuk was uh, not going to be there. And it's a good thing. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Yeah, Steven Souza Jr. might have been flying through the bullpen bench by that time. That, yeah, the, yeah, he would have gotten knocked over the, the short wall. Yeah. That would have been another 15-yard targeting penalty. <laughs> and probably would have caused a fumble. Yeah. Pitch upstairs. Two outs for the man at second. A 1-2 count on Donovan Solano. Already missing. Sousa Jr. He gave us material. Yes, he did. Popped up right side. Schaefer starts out. Montuk comes in and makes the catch. No runs. A man left. One nothing. Tampa Bay. You recall he walked a man with one out in the second inning and then got a double play ball uh, started by Longoria double play ball out of Ryan Rayburn uh, that erased the base runner and from then on it was uh, 120 pitches six strikeouts and a walk Matt Garza had his way with the Tigers that night before the evening was over he pitched nine innings of no hit baseball walked only one struck out six. Made 120 pitches, uh, was in complete command that night as he pitched his way into the baseball record book. You know, as, as we look at that uh, scorecard there, Kudo fouls this one out of play for a strike. Just in those few years, when I compare that one to the one that we prepare now, it tells me that this game. There's so much more information available now, you know, that, that you can put on your scorecard just in case it makes sense to use it. Uh, the breakouts now that we have statistically speaking, and and that was a pretty clean card there as it goes. Kudo and his first at bat hits a roller to Solano. The fastball in on him, and he is out of there four to three. Let's see. Breaks into the major leagues with a ground ball out. So one away. You know that outing, any outing that Garza was in was always interesting. Because you always had the feeling that something really interesting could happen at any moment. And when he had that thing going, it had all the tension of a no-hitter, but it had 
the tension superimpose the Garza element of it because <laughs> I mean, he, he, he had such emotion with him all the time on the mound. Yeah, he, I mean, he was high strung, and you mean that in a in a good way. Just a lot of energy to burn off and, and you know, very intense about what he did. And you knew at that point of his career with the stuff that he had that a game like that that he was capable of every time that he went out. He took out that kind of stuff to be able to just dominate a team. And you never knew if that was going to be the night or not. And certainly that that one, it was. Yep. Another stop on the way of the Rays, clinching their second AL East title. And that went right down to the last day of the regular season. You feared the ground ball back to him to end it. <laughs> that was the fear. Yeah. Just hit it to anybody, not a comebacker. <laughs> I still think about when when he was in Chicago yep. and it was one out away from that shutout mm -hmm. early in the season and got a ground ball and literally if it was here at Tropicana Field he fielded it cleanly turned to first base and threw it over the Rays dugout about eight rows deep yep. like it trying to involve the fan in the experience and have the fan get the put out unfortunately the fan was a little removed from first base very <laughs> And he got pulled for that game and didn't wow. end up getting the, the, yeah. the shutout. Yeah. But he got the no hitter. Yeah, I'm not I'm not quite score, sure how I would have scored that. You would have drawn a line for yeah. the throw. That's right. Because exactly you wouldn't have believed right. it later. <laughs> Mikey See, that's, oh. There's a strike. That's the difference between the way that you scored, and, and that was a great example of how you can go back point these things out the number of pitches he threw you can go back and relive the story where I can relive it that night give me give me a week and if it's a really big moment maybe give me the rest of the season but if I went back to a book from last year and looked up a random game in June I wouldn't know who won I, I could probably count the the the, 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 the diamonds that I colored in yep. and I could probably tell you from there it's six here for the Rays and the Yankees have four colored in. So the Rays won. That would be the, at the end of the of night. That's what really counts. High fly ball, and Hicks is there for this one and makes the catch just inside the right field line. Montuk is the second out. And so I'm saying that because I'll bet it's really cool to be able to go back 10 years ago and look at certain games and be able to almost relive them by the notes that you put in your book. Yep. Yeah, it's cool. Hey, there you go, right there on the on the graphic. Now, see that one, that run scored by Logan Forsythe, just like you. It's all colored in there, the diamond. Want to know the count? So, see the truck now is doing that, lifting that from your style of scoring. And then that would explain why I get along so well with the truck. Fly ball lifted toward right center. Ellsbury is over there as Hicks turns away and Ellsbury makes the catch. Ray's going to walk, leave a man. We're through two. It's one nothing Tampa Bay.
great moment. Nightcap of the doubleheader in New York in the Bronx against the Yankees. Matt Moore striking out 11, the most ever by Array in his first major league start. And tonight for the Rays, another young lefty, hard thrower, Blake Snell out there. He made 19 pitches in the first inning, 14 in the second. And he'll face the top of the order again here in the third inning. So we'll see how this goes with Gardner, Ellsbury, and Sanchez. A lot of pitches and not many deep outings in terms of innings. Pitches of all 1 and 0. The interesting thing about him, when you look at the pitches he has, and, and we so often talk about it goes back first to command of the fastball. And if he could do that and the Rays confident that he can but it, it has been a challenge recently with all the pitches he has potentially and it's just that potential at this point he could really be something I mean hitters with some command hitters would be at a decided loss with the number of pitches he has. Yeah I mean the traditional four he's, he's got the fastball you know power fastball you know slider curveball change up but the key is you've got to you've got to put yourself in position where the secondary pitches become effective and they're not effective when you're constantly behind see you know effective there because you are behind and the hitters not expecting it you can take it into the zone. Yeah, that, that's a that's a rarity. A lot of times you're coming with two one fastballs, and the hitters are able to jump on that. So if you show the ability to command the count most of the time, and when you are behind, to still be able to use the secondary pitches, that's when you take it to another level. And he comes back and strikes out Gardner. How about the last two pitches? Yep. You know the ability to do that two and one. That's not the norm. For Blake Snell, but we said early on he's been doing a better job in this game of mixing. So now you get the two strikes, 87 mile an hour slider. How badly did Gardner miss that one? And, and that's why when you see those, you legitimately think that the sky could be the limit for him. I would agree. I would agree, but it will come down to fastball command, period, end of discussion. And if he can do that. Hey, right there. Yeah. Good. First pitch fastball on the corner at 95. Yeah. And then typically, what's that, what does that tell you? When you're able to command the fastball, your release point, your mechanics, everything's in sync. When that's the case, then the secondary pitches usually follow because same release point, you're going to get the same result with that pitch. You're going to get the pitch, you know, I'm going to start it here, it's going to end up here. Change up, I'm just going to go to the outer half. Throw it like a fastball. It's going to fade a little bit. I'm going to get the result I want. Oh. And he, that's a called strike right there. Hard stuff here to Ellsbury, the first three pitches. And they cut the miss. So Ellsbury's out on strikes. Well, fastball, 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 breaking ball. One two count. Commanded the fastball, got ahead, and then takes it below the zone. And All right, we'll check with Todd here on the back to back strikeouts. Dwayne, again, you can get as advanced or as uh, just basic as you want, but you can count the strikeouts. The swinging called, and then I, you had a number right next to it. I, I think you might do that as well. Uh, but earlier, I didn't have the numbers down. But now, when Blake Snell starts to pile up the strikeouts, you can see right away if you keep the count, you just go back to the last one. He's up to five already after two and two thirds. Yeah, that's a nice running count. One and one. You know, you've got a lot going on sometimes, and, and I will admit that there are times when I try to keep track, and I'll. Put that down. I put a little five in this case with a circle up in the corner. Gives you an idea where you are, but you, you do get behind from time to time. If something else happens, you say something extremely interesting <laughs> okay. and that catches my attention. 
and I have to engage you in conversation about it, well, then I might not put down the five with the circle. I get it. But then I have to go back and kind of catch up. Which you do. So Good house cleaning. Well, I like to engage you. I like to bring yeah. you in sometime right. to my little world. <laughs> two and two. Yeah, and it's it's a fun place to be. <laughs> time to time. Yeah, you know, I, I leave breadcrumbs though. Yeah, you always going to find my way back out. Right, right. It's nice to visit. <laughs> Not always like, nice to live here. Break a branch once in a while. <laughs> Cookie crumb. 2 2 the count on Gary Sanchez. Well, we've just about in the uh, last couple of series uh, talked him into being the American League Rookie of the Year, I think, comparing him to Willie McCovey and watching him hit home runs. He's, he's really been something special. He really has. I, I mean, the, the numbers that he's put up, we already saw the graphic, the quickest to, to 19 home runs in the history. Pitch just missed. So the first walk given up by Snell. Well, our Coors Light cold hard facts. And here's the uh, comparison as we discussed the other night when McCovey won the National League Rookie of the Year honor in 1959. You know, Sanchez was the American League Player of the Month in August. McCovey was the National League Player of the Month in August that year, and their number is pretty remarkable. The first pitch strike to Billy Butler. And there's no clear front runner in the American League. You know, That's it's right. almost like the, the, the league's been waiting for someone to take control of that race, and maybe he has in 44 games, and then, well, another one, 10 or 11? Yeah, I think they have 11, 02. Sanchez aboard. They have 11 counting this one. Covered up by Kurt Casale. One and two. Hit. Montuk with the pickup. Sanchez heads to third. Throw cut off. And it's first and third. Well, I thought initially that ball was hit pretty hard by Billy Butler and got out to Montuk that they were going to have a shot at Gary Sanchez trying to go to third. But look at Billy Butler just catching that ball before it got by him. How quickly though it gets to Mato turn spin throw. Well, with Sanchez running, you'd think there might be a shot. Yeah. Now Mark Teixeira. Well, he ended the first on a pop to Schaefer. Close to the hitter, that is. One and all the count. A share of 407 home runs. There's a strike to him, one and one. 54th on baseball's all time home run list. Sharing that spot with Duke Snyder. Tamper foul. It's 
One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Well, here's the blast coming from to share it Tuesday night. Connecting on a Drew Smiley fastball. What turned out to be a 5 3 New York victory. Hot shot foul outside of third. Just foul right there. He turned on the fastball. Certainly did. Geared up for it, doesn't want to get beat by that fastball. I mean, how about this? You look at Sanchez and then Teixeira with Butler in between, but you've got Sanchez, the quickest player in Major League history to get to 18 and 19 home runs, and you've got Teixeira, who's now tied with Duke Snyder on the home run list. Tamper foul. I mean, that's that's yesterday, today, and the future in this game right there. Covers a lot of ground. You tie those guys together. And I'm always reminded of the great Don Zimmer and his Duke Snyder stories. So this is uh, an interwoven game for sure. Foul out of play. Still 2 2 to Mark Teixeira. These last few pitches by Blake Snell, interesting in the fact that, that the two fastballs, Casale wanted them up. They were down in the zone. Then he wants the breaking ball, and it's up in the zone. <laughs> Teixeira is still swinging. You got a guy right now that is in swing mode. This one. A liner. Foul. He truly is swinging at everything. He, I mean, yeah. Snell is throwing him everything. And all over the place. When you when you look at the the pitch track there, they're all over the place. And and they've been fastballs, breaking ball, that was a changeup. So yeah. Every part of the zone, every pitch that he throws. Is the 28th pitch of the inning coming? Oh, and he misses in. So it's a full count. And yeah, that one definitely in and off. Right there, drive the pitch to the spot. Casale's trying. The inning started with two relatively quick strikeouts. Tenth pitch of this at bat. And it's ball four. The bases are loaded. And Dwayne, I'm going to tell you, that is a veteran at bat by Mark Teixeira. You know, usually when you get a guy into swing mode, you get it close and he's hacking. And he was able to take the last two pitches. That fastball may have been a little easier to take because it was up and in and you're not much you could do with that. But the breaking ball following it. And he just spits on it. That's a guy who's had a lot of bad bats, has seen a lot of pitches, seen a lot of sequences, and he put together a good one there. Yeah, that's a great point that you make there. And now Jim Hickey out to have a little conversation and give Snell a chance to catch his breath after that last at bat, a 10 pitch at bat for Teixeira. The pitch count in this inning is up to 29. And he prepares to face Chase Headland. And you're starting to see some movement in that raised bullpen. Right now, the average once again up over 20 and inning. You know, we talked to that last seven starts and that the, the little thing we had earlier. 
first 10 last seven his last seven starts he's averaged about 23 pitches per right now closing in on 21 per and that's if he gets a first pitch out Headley line to short his first time one and oh missed with a fastball Snell got the first two, walked Sanchez. Butler single to Shera with an extended at bat, walked. 1 0 to Headley on its way. And he hits a fly ball, right center. Matuk is there and he'll make the catch. The Yankees will leave him loaded. No runs, a hit, three left. Bottom of the third coming. 1 0 Rays. Son brought to you by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by your Southern Chevy dealers. Well, a 31 pitch top of the third. And Blake Snell gets through it, not allowing a run, leaving the bases loaded. And the Rays with this one nothing lead will have Kevin Kiermeyer to begin the bottom of the third against Luis Sessa. It's fouled back. Kiermeyer had a base hit his first time. I'll tell you what, he gets another fastball like that, he's going to round the bases by himself. I'm telling you. Yeah, I would do that too. One and one. <laughs> Scored their run in the first with Forsyth and Kiermaier opened with base hits. Brad Miller drove in the run. Oh, one two, the shift is on. And a base hit through the shift up the middle. Kiermaier is two for two, an aggressive turn at first and back to the bag he goes. I have absolutely no idea what Sessa is thinking with that sequence right there. I mean, he had two great swings at fastballs. Two great swings at fastballs. It's a one and two count, time to expand, and instead you, you fire another heater right out over the plate, and he hits a missile up the middle. Well, no kidding. You know, that's where you talk about reading a hitter's swing and, and expanding when you're ahead in the count. Yeah, that's the development stage, too. The Yankees have taken sets of the former infielder. They love his arm, and you can see there's a lot to like about it. Sure. But there's also a lot to learn. But it, but it's also indicative of, of a lot of what we see now. You know what I mean? That feel for read a swing, understand a count, go from there. 
Well, I really think, and we've, we've touched on this before, and we reference people like Greg Maddox, and nobody's going to be no. like Greg Maddox, but the idea, the concept is still worth discussing. Especially, there goes Kiermeyer, and the throw down is not going to be in time. Stolen base number 21 for Kiermeyer as the count on Longoria goes to a ball and a strike. Take another look at this. You know, it wasn't the biggest lead and wasn't his best jump. However, the, the ability to get to full speed as fast as he does allows him to. That is that is close, and they're going to look at it. Yeah. The hand may not have been to the bag yet. Look how he lifts the fingers up, and there's the tag on the helmet. They're going to they're going to overturn this. Well, while they review this, uh, let's go to Todd and uh, discuss that point. Review. Well, normally I score in pen, so I wait. But you would you would have, if you score in pencil, obviously you have a steal S, and I go when the the hitter. Uh, was at the plate, so S with Longoria hitting. Uh, but guys, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to erase this one. Yeah, no, that that, that the tag came down and got Kiermaier on the top of the helmet before the hand got to the bag. So if you score in pen, you have to wait. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, you're a brave man. Take another watch, look. Watch the tag to the helmet right there. Hands not to the bag. That's gonna be. There you go. So he is caught stealing. Beautiful. So the call overturned. Todd, you writing review in there? I don't. You don't? Uh, I don't. I just write it two to four out. I don't. Okay. How about you, Dwayne? Well, yeah, I find it like in mine, <laughs> they're all blank, and I, I construct the diamond base by base, and I'll put a little review off to the side. With a little arrow pointing over there. Okay, that exchange was priceless because I think Todd felt like he just got in trouble. <laughs> no, I, no I, I don't. What do you do? You do that? Like he's going to get yelled at now. Todd, you have me up here. You're never going to get yelled at for high score. <laughs> so something like this, Dwayne? Two, two. Yeah, that, that's great. Way to go. All right, I've learned something today. See? I might have to add that in now. There you got the little R for review. You point it right there. A swing and a miss. Longoria chased the slider. He's out for the second out. Who knew keeping score could be this much fun? Yep, it is fun, right? Sure is. <laughs> Notice how I haven't been called into one conversation. I just kind of add in a little bit here and there. And you're doing a great job. Well. I'm just trying to stay relevant. <laughs> Brad Miller. Miller has the run batted in in this game. It came with a base hit to the opposite side that scored Logan Forsyth. So the caught stealing the third time Kiermaier has been caught stealing this year He's 20 of 23 on the year. I think the last time that he got caught was it against this team. I think it was I think it was McCann got him way back. And there is ball four. See there's that memory of yours. That but is but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Well, here's Corey Dickerson, and uh, look at the September he's put together to move that average up over 240 to start this game, hitting 304 for the 18 games here. Strikes.
pitch popped up foul and will carry out a play. It's one and one. Way wide. Two and one. Two balls, two strikes. And missing that fastball. Fastball away. We're headed into the fourth one nothing race. One to nothing. Blake Snell, listen, he's run his pitch count up a little bit. He's had some trouble, left six runners on base, but he's been able to come up with some big strikeouts. Breaking ball below, fastball up, fastball looking right there. Good pitch on the inside corner. That sequence there to Brett Gardner, very impressive. 2 1 slider, 2 2 slider. Another breaking ball to get Ellsbury. So some big strikeouts along the way, and Blake Snell has kept the Yankees off the board. Facing D.D. Gregorius, the pitch is outside. And the way he has pitched in this game can be both frustrating and encouraging to the opposition. <laughs> you know, frustrating in that they feel as if they should have something on the board here. And here's a leadoff base hit by Gregorius. He's two for two, sends a fastball back into center field. So you're frustrated by that, and they still think as good as Snell could be. They've come this close to putting together a big inning and so this lineup continues to be confident against him. I mean they're saying you're right you, you look at the opportunities I mean six runners left on base in three innings. However we've seen this before on the other side you get opportunities early you don't cash in they dry up. And there you go. So a sense of urgency too. 
Shot to center by Hicks. Kiermaier back to make the catch. Turning and heading back to first, Gregorius. Hicks hit the ball pretty well right there. And Kiermaier grabbed it. Yeah, he just hit it to the wrong field. He hit it to the eight position, Dwayne. And the eight position on the Rays team most of the time yep. is going to run it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really is something very special with his work in center field. Yeah, you see him every day, or he's your hometown guy, and you think, well, yeah, he's really good. Yeah. No, when you see him play, you're, you're seeing something special. Yeah, we, we were talking with Al Leiter uh, yesterday before the ball game. And I said, you know, I've gotten a chance to play with some pretty good center fielders, Devon White, Kenny Lofton, yeah. you know, I, I, Steve Finley, mm -hmm. Jimmy Edmonds. Yep. He's the best I've seen. He's the best I've mm -hmm. seen. He, I, I, can, I can say that with a clear conscience, and I've seen some good ones. But he's the best I've seen, not only because of the plays that he makes, but the effort he gives on plays that are never going to show up in the scorebook, the ground that he can cover, and the effort that he gives, it's second to none of anybody that I've seen playing that position, period. Yeah, you know that, that statistic that we're trying to figure out how you get it, run scored and run saved, but bases saved is really his game. You, you see him go after a ball in the gap and the effort to get to it and throwing it off balance by the way not even setting his feet because he's got a tremendous throwing arm but throwing off balance just to get it back into the infield to keep the guy at first base how many times have we seen that yep. you don't see that from other center fielders or any other outfielders for that well and, and you know as a pitcher how valuable that is to keep a guy at first as opposed to second a scoring opportunity or a double play possibility. Yep. Yeah, I, come on. Do the, you know, this game's built on numbers and built on math. You get a guy out at second, it's going to be a lot easier to score him from there than from first. The 0-2, Solano lifts it into right center, and Kiermaier makes the call. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> You have just added another element to <laughs> analytics and the metrics of this game bases. <laughs> you're, you're giving them more and more to run with. Just trying to contribute. That's all. <laughs> hey, look at it this way. It could be another job. And everybody needs a job. Yeah, whether they get one or not, it's another story, but everybody needs one. Runner at first with two outs. I'm not sure where this this exercise is going, but no, I, it's, I it's like been it. kind of fun so it, far. It, it, well, it's been it, that we were just on the whole the, the Kiermaier deal, and, and yeah. I'm telling you, it's just it's special, and it's a lot of stuff that, quite frankly, watching the game at home on TV, you don't get to see. Yeah. You don't get to. You see. You know what you see is the dirty uniform, all the time. Right. You're thinking. No, he puts that on and starts the game like that because it, it appears three pitches into the game it looks like that. Pitches down. One ball, no strikes. Two nothing count. You know, like it, it, it's it's football season. It's college football. Yep. Kiermaier is the guy that has the five star tools, ability, and talent that plays the game like a two star. Mm-hmm. Yep. How refreshing. Not a guy who's going to take it all for granted and. And feel that, hey, I'm here. Doesn't coast. Yeah, no. That's great. Oh. 
3 1. A run four hits for the Rays, no runs, five hits for New York. Jacoby Ellsbury's on deck. Ground ball back to the hill. Snell with the toss to first. Down go the Yankees. They leave a man at first. One nothing Tampa Bay. He uh, had uh, quite a few pitches, 129 pitches in this uh, game, struck out 11. He retired the last 19 men he faced. And here's the final out when Dusty Baker grounded out to third base. Hard Howell was over at third. He went the distance, gave up uh, no hits. That's blank. He had 11 strikeouts and walked three, made 129 pitches en route to his fifth no hitter. Yeah, you know, he uh, at that time led the National League. I noticed there, there's a little star in the corner by his ERA. National League led the league in uh, earned run average at that point. Uh, another little note that uh, you'll find added, especially if you're going to work a game, you'll add a little indicators such as that. And uh, that's, you know, a special, uh, special scorecard right there of that record breaking no hitter by Nolan Ryan. 2 and 0 the count. You know, baseball it has to be the most chronicled either by word or numbers activity on the face of the planet. Liner in the left, a one hop to the wall. To Sally on his way to second, and he's going to make it standing up, picking up his eighth double of the year. So the race put the leadoff man on. He's in scoring position. Looking to add to this lead, this great start here in the fourth inning. Another fastball doesn't quite get to its spot. Casale, good four seam fastball hitter. We know he can get hot too, and he hammers this ball to the wall and left. So let me ask you this when the season's over, I mean, obviously you have uh, a couple of books that you fill up. How many years worth of books do you have, and what do you do with them? <laughs> Where are they? I've kept them all. Oh, I've, I, well, there's so no that's, question. So we're working on, uh, you know, 40 years plus of, of Major League Baseball in those scorebooks. Volumes. And they are, uh, they're in the garage. Humidity controlled. Now, I, I, this is the other thing that I know about you. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be talking about this, but I'm going to. <laughs> And that is when you know when we get our you know the the, the pregame notes and the pregame lineup sheet, and you always get two lineup sheets. One I'm assuming that you use for the game. Oh, snap throw oh. back to second, and they picked off Casale. Caracudo, they're showing the butt on the first pitch, and down to second Sanchez with his throw to pick off Casale. He's Gregarious done. right there. Yeah, he's done this to the Rays before, too. You remember he did it up at Yankee Stadium from his knees. 
And there's the tag before the hand gets to the bag. And you're anticipating the bunt being put down. And if you get a little bit too far or you're not quick enough getting back, those catchers will go behind you. And a popper down the left field line. Gardner in a hurry, can't Ray, quite Ray. get there. And Gregorius out from shortstop as it falls in between the two of them. That was a little odd. That was his like the, the hit by Forsythe. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't write it very neat, but oh, there's Todd. It's supposed to be two to six. It's supposed to say out, but I'm going to have to erase that and write it better. But no, that, like, we get it. <laughs> I got it right. Yeah, he's right. out. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm assuming that one of those sheets that you used for the game, and then another that you take home and you have all those score sheets too. <laughs> Am I right on that one? Yeah, not right. Not right on that. One. No, I'm no, not. No. Um, I know I've asked you before. That's why I didn't know if I should talk about it because there's a foul ball back. I brought it up before you, and you kind of shot me down, and I'm like, I oh no, no, I. I think everybody involved with this game is a little compulsive. I think everybody, players, yeah. broadcasters, writers, executives, if you're around this game, you have to have a little bit of that in you. It's so routine mm -hmm. oriented. Yep. It, it, I mean, it is, it's scary how routine oriented this game is. Yep. And like you said, you make a great point. You always think about it from the player's perspective with all the. But it's up to here. It's uh, it's a go over that. Everybody involved in. Yeah, you're right about that. Without question. With that and oh, there's quite a pitch right there by Sesson to pick up the strikeout. Two gone in the bottom half of the fourth inning. You know we we try to start games organized, and I'll get two of those lineups. You have all the rosters, all the coaches, all of that broken down, names, numbers, and all that. And and it's a nice backup. You know, there are a lot of people that we're talking about that we will see. You never know. If, is, is the first base coach suddenly going to be relevant to any situation in the game? He right. might be. And as a backup, you just want to make sure, especially either visiting or when we're on the road, other clubs, you know, sometimes they'll run, something happens to their first base coach, and for that series, maybe he's gone, they've got a new guy in there. You know, I always want to just check that and have those as a double backup so that they're right there. Now, the great thing about that, it starts organized. You've got, in this case, the Yankee pile one side, the Rays pile another side. But if you look now, you know, here we are at the bottom <laughs> of the fourth inning, and there are papers everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You, wind, you wind up sifting through it all. But I just figure if you have two of them, it doubles your chances of finding it quicker in the mass confusion. Okay, this has been years I've been wondering about that. And the best part about it is, I actually thought it was because you took one home and you have these stacks <laughs> of like the lineup sheets. And I thought to myself, what a great idea. I wish I would have started that sooner too. Yeah. And here you don't no, even no. do it. <laughs> That's tremendous. That is hilarious. <laughs> Ground ball for Gregorius. Schaefer's out of there, and the Rays, after such a promising beginning, do nothing in the fourth. They lead one nothing.
As we have talked about all night long during our scoring the game broadcast here at Tropicana Field, there are many different ways to keep score. I personally learned from my father, Harry Callis, and I actually have his score sheet from the final game of the World Series between the Rays and the Philadelphia Phillies in 2008. And just to show you the differences uh, between his scoring and my scoring, we can see what we've done already here. But uh, here's the first inning for the Phillies, for example, with Jimmy Rollins against Scott Casimir. He would, a seven fly out to left field, and he would uh, show a little hump back there if it was a fly ball up in the air, and then if it was a line drive, it would be a straight line. Next batter, Jason Worth, would walk. And then he goes to Chase Utley, the, the number three hitter, hit by a pitch. He would advance runners, guys, without the positions. He would actually write the name in, as you can see. Worth goes to second via Utley. He goes to third. He didn't write Burl in there. He used to call Pat Burl bait. So he goes to third via bait and then uh, works his way home when Shane Victorino ends up with a base hit. Victorino's hit, though, there's no line to the outfield, left field, right field, center field. It's just a single. Uh, so there you see two different ways to score. That's the way dad used to score and he would advance runners with the names which I thought would be way too wordy in a, a little score sheet box. But that's the way he did it. And uh, I learned and I was told I, I kept score when I was like six or seven years old. I have no recollection of that. But I was a kid who uh, was sitting in the stands keeping score my own way. So I used some of dad's stuff and picked up some of my own ways to keep score. Guys back to you. All right. Boy, that's that's a. Uh... A great exercise right there as Ellsbury grounds out to Forsyth. A great exercise in, in how scoring is such an individual activity. And and you, you would anticipate think of the bloodlines, Harry Callis, Todd Callis, and I, I've always respected that so much. As a I guess a twelve or thirteen year old kid, I listened to Harry Callis when he broke into the major leagues. As the third member of the Astros crew, and I used to listen to all their games. Activity in the bullpen now, and to hear that story from Todd and compare his score sheet with his dad's is, is just amazing. And so he's, he has incorporated part of his dad's scorekeeping, and as you would expect and hope, has added his own touch to it as well. Two and all the count here. Gary Sanchez up. One out. Base is empty. Farquhar and Whitley up in the bullpen. Well, and I think what you're assuming here is any trouble, Danny Farquhar, to get out of it. Chase Whitley starting to get ready, maybe for a clean inning. Not even to the rubber yet. Just kind of getting. A, a slow loose slow play. You know, they tried to they wanted to treat him like a starter. Well Sanchez walks for the second time this one on four pitches. One on one out for Billy Butler. Chop right side, Forsyth going to have to go to first. Boy, with Butler running, you're hopeful that a ground ball might turn out to be a double play possibility, but just not hit hard enough. And so the out is at first with Sanchez moving up to second. Right off the end of the bat and a chopper to boot, so you've got to wait for it. Boy, that was initially what you're thinking. You're exactly right, but not to be. And so Blake Snell's going to have to come up. Big once again with the runner in scoring position. Against Teixeira no less who's had a couple of opportunities already. Well that long at bat he had in the third to draw the walk. And now a strike on the outside corner to get the count running in his favor. 0 1. There doubles up. Fastball that time. 0 oh, 2. How about that? Two pitches, one spot. And it's a perfect spot. And 
and he comes back with the curveball there and strikes him out got him down 0 2 and said oh 0 2 here's the curveball and he strikes him out with it. One nothing Rays bottom of the fifth coming. Blake Snell, and I'm going to tell you something, Dwayne. He saved his best sequence for what may have been the last hitter he's going to face in this ball game. First pitch curveball, you couldn't have placed it any better. Follow that up with a fastball in the same exact spot, and now that you're ahead, expand the middle of the plate down. That was just great pitching by Blake Snell. That is as good as it gets. And if this night is indeed over. Boy, he ended on a big high note. Yeah, well, what we saw right there is why you think he could be so good. Well, what did he show? First, he showed command. And <laughs> if he can do that, now that's elite level, what he just did, those three pitches. I mean, kneecaps, outside corner with the curveball and the fastball. Oh. And then, okay, now I'm going to come over the heart of the plate, but it's going to be below the zone. You're going to think it's you, you know, mistake, mm -hmm. but I'm going to drop it below the zone. You just can't do it any better. 2-2, Two -two, Mikey Montuk here against Luis Sessa. Yeah, that's a nice job right there by Snell to end the top of the fifth. You know, and you and you end up you beat you were in some trouble early, no question. You'd like to have some at bats back, but you finished strong. You kept the other team off the board, and you finished with that sequence. What a confidence boost going forward, assuming Chase Whitley is coming into the game, and you have every reason to believe that he is. Ronto pops it up, foul ball, and to share is after it. It's the first out. Took 0 for 2. Remember, fans, this Sunday, take advantage of fan appreciation specials, including $5 all you can drink Pepsi fountain drinks, half off retail items, and even trade up your old Devil Rays or Red Sox jersey for a new Rays jersey for $60. Call 888 Fan Rays for more information. Logan Forsythe. Want to know? One ball, one strike. Oh, 
ball, two strikes. And a cut and a miss on the fastball. Sessa got him down one two and then here's the heater and able to get it by Logan Forsythe. you know two strikes you're thinking okay up the middle he gets a pitch here to handle but that ball had some had some fuzz on it and he's able to get it past Logan not easy. Base is empty for Kevin Kiermeyer. two for two. Takes the breaking ball in there. Strike one. First pitch curveball from Sessa. Line drive, and that's foul. Out of play. A two strike count. Two. Raise with a run, five hits. New York, no runs, five hits. Raise scored their run in the first. Driven home by Brad Miller. And there is strike three call. Breaking ball started wide and broke over. We go to the sixth. One nothing. Rays. have a one nothing lead both teams with five hits normally we'd show you a little video review of the first five innings in our game summary but tonight we'll take you through the game summary via scoring the game that's our theme tonight on our Rays broadcast so here's the Rays side of the scorebook and you'll see right here Logan Forsythe let off the game a little flare hit to right field he moved the second base on a Kevin Kiermeyer hit to right field as well after Evan Longoria lined out it was Brad Miller who made the score one nothing with a single to right that moved Kiermaier to third base and scored Logan Forsythe. Then Dickerson and Casale would make the final two outs of the inning. And guys, as you look at the board overall in the first five innings, as you said, Dwayne, uh, very well put, it starts to tell you a story. Uh, you can see that Brad Miller's been on base both times, that Kevin Kiermaier has a couple of hits, and that the night hasn't been as good so far for Corey Dickerson. So that's our game summary on our scoreboard. Back to you. And a new pitcher for the Rays. Leading off is Chase Headley lifting a foul ball back a third out of play. Chase Whitley in the ball game in relief now of Blake Snell. Well, Whitley, they coming back from that Tommy John surgery and 
know, the Rays wanted to use him like a starter, keep him on that kind of a schedule, even though he would be coming in relief in those ball games, and now on for the third time. First couple that was with Matt Andrees. This time, Blake Snell. And protecting a one run lead. By the way, that game summary could have been the game summary of the year, number one. And number two, the way Todd started to get me into the story that he was telling at the end, mm -hmm. wouldn't you love to have him put you to bed reading a, a, a story? Oh, he could, he could do that yeah? for sure, yeah. Because, I mean, that, that was, uh, he started to tell a story, and he had me interested. Mm -hmm. He brought you in. Even though I've been supposedly watching it the whole time. <laughs> the way that he put it. Really interested. Yeah. So, boy, this game really is something. Yep. It's a close game. A lot of ebbs and flows. Yep. Do the story element in there. Swing again, a miss. So Hetley strikes out swinging. Seventh strikeout for Rays pitching. Five innings for Snell, five hits, no runs, three walks, six strikeouts, 88 pitches. What a great view of that change up there, 84. Some tailing action and sink at the end. Not afraid to use that pitch out over the plate, knowing that the, the speed difference and a little bit of movement will be effective. D.D. Gregorius. It's a ball. Whitley with a couple two inning appearances. And now here pitching in the sixth inning in relief of Snell. 2 and 0. Oh. Pop up that is playable and is out number two. Caracudo with the catch there, two up, two down. Right back to Todd Callis. Todd? All right, a little F5 there, Dwayne. I know you do it a little differently. I think you put fair or foul where the ball is caught. That's something I, I don't add to mind. But how do you do the change of pitchers here with Chase Willie? By the way, we'll fill out the Blake Snell line here at the bottom uh, as his night is over. Five innings of five hits. Shut out baseball, three walks and six Ks. Dwayne, how do you? Uh, I just put the initials of the new guy here. How do you put that on your scoreboard? Yeah, it depends on uh, when that pitching change is made and when you make one after a full inning. You know, I just I you put that little cross line and then the horizontal line, and I I tend just to put the, a little cross. Through the vertical line between the fifth and sixth inning as it comes down, and that just gives me uh, a line of demarcation so that I know there's five full innings. Now, if you get into the middle of an inning, it gets a little bit more complicated than that. Kicks up here with a count now of two balls and a strike. And I just flat out refuse to take part in that whole action. No idea who's come in and when. And yet, when you're called upon to uh, rebuild and recount an inning, you do it flawlessly. <laughs> I mean, you just jump from one inning to the next and, uh, against this pitcher to the next. It, it is amazing how much more visual. You know what I mean? You know, we talked about that. Um, Line drive, a two-out base hit for Hicks, hard hit up the middle. Yeah, we talk about that when you're when you're talking about pitting, pitching coaches and hitting coaches on how they've got to get their message, and, you know, and their philosophy across to a lot of different guys who have different personality traits, who learn differently, mm -hmm. who who soak things in differently, and you've got to be able to take that message and and be able to apply it to all of them, have it soak in with all these different types of, of learning things. Yeah. And for me, it's visual. Boy, I, 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 it's, I look at it or have seen it, and then it just, and, and remember it from there. That, that's my big thing. Writing it down certainly helps that, there's no question about it, but yeah, the, the visual end of things is much bigger 
much bigger for me than than writing stuff down. Well here's Brian McCann he's going to be called upon to pinch hit for Solano and we'll see how Todd <laughs> he gets right to the point he does he, he McCann's in the game right now <laughs> here he is this is his square you you could Dwayne on the far left side put him in as the sub but I tend to put in the guy that comes in to the game in this case for the second baseman afterwards because it, it gets a little bulky there but I can always refer to the far box and see that Brian McCann was the guy who hit in that spot yeah see a couple different ways to do it I will put McCann in where that sub would be with a pH for pinch hit and a pH inside the empty box in the sixth inning. Ooh, tie it together. Yep. It's almost like you leave breadcrumbs when you're doing that too. That exactly. To follow it yep. right over. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, thigh bones connected to the hip bone. Most of the time. Yep. And when it's not, trouble. <laughs> One strike the count. Up the right side, that's foul. Beyond the bullpen. 0 2. But the point you made, I think it's right on. You know what that's like? It's like raising children. Yeah. Some are going to be visual learners, some are going to be auditory. I, it's just you you figure that out and pursue the most efficient path. And you know, I mean, you you've been in a clubhouse. You take 25 people, and I don't care if they're baseball players or accountants mm -hmm. or football players or broadcasters. 25 people are 25 people. It's, it's you're going to have a great variation. Yep. And, and again, that's why. When you think about the, the job that Jim Hickey does with 12, 13 pitchers to start out with, mm -hmm. and then over the course of the season, and I got to get my message across to all of them. Yep. Hi, Popper. Here comes Dickerson in from left, and he makes the catch to retire McCann pinch hitting. So we're going to go into the home half of inning six of the race, hold a one nothing lead. On Fox Sports Sound is brought to you by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram, by Lazy Days RV, your RV authority, and by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Rays ramping up their series here against New York, holding a 1 0 lead. Evan Longoria will open the bottom of the sixth, followed by Brad Miller and then Corey Dickerson. Torreya send the ball game now. It's second. Ronald Torreya takes over. First pitch down and away to Longoria. Evan is lined to first and has struck out swinging.
2 and 0. Oh. Three oh count he misses up. Sessa for five innings allowing a run on five hits action in the bullpen. Tommy Lane the left hander Luis Severino the right hander. Oh. Ooh, a strike. The three oh pitch and the strike at the very top of the zone. The point that you were making earlier get it close. And good chance it goes your way. Still got a big hole to climb out of. Ground ball third. Headley up with it and a high throw, but a little back back up by Teixeira, and he takes care of that. That brings up Brad Miller. Has driven in the run tonight. Our Toyota inside look. The first three seasons. 29 home runs and 1,111 at bats. And this year, 516 at bats, and he has 30 home runs. You know, we talked about this early. I don't know that anyone anticipated he was going to hit 30 home runs, mm -hmm. but you could see flashes uh, in his numbers of his slugging percentage of his time with Seattle. But I don't know that uh, anyone could honestly say, of course, we knew he would hit 30 home runs. No Just way. Not going to have that. No, no. But you know what? He set the bar now. Mm -hmm. And y you don't, I, I will say this. I agree with you that there is nobody. Yeah, you, know, you could talk potential, whatever. But I don't think anybody you know, believes that. But as you've watched this season unfold, there's not one part of you, or me for that matter, that thinks it's fluky. No, we've seen him swing the bat and hit the ball hard, harder than anybody that uh, immediately comes to mind. He pops it up and fouls out to Deshera here. There are there are some guys that you'll see put together a year where you'll say to yourself, "You will never do that again, never." But the thing about Brad Miller is number one, how hard he hits the ball, and the simple fact that he is not confined to right field. We've seen them take balls out to straightaway left, deep left center, center, and all the way over. And that's why you know a guy is capable of hitting 30. When he can go, I mean, left, literally left field all the way over to right field, then you give yourself a chance on pitches that are in different spots of the strike zone. It's not just the middle end that you can pull. Here's now. Corey Dickerson, and he hits this one out. Breaking ball waiting for him, and Dickerson Puts it into the seats in right field. His 23rd home run of the year. Two nothing Rays. Assessa <laughs> twice had struck him out on a fastball. Starts him with the breaking stuff, and he's right on it. Well, Todd. Puts that one in the book. And, and and I like the way. Oh boy, oh, look at that. We're getting fancy. Yeah. Way advanced. Makes it a two-nothing game. See, that's good for recapping. Ah, yeah. You know, you got yeah, the yeah, post yeah. game. Look at that. Made it two to nothing. Hanging slide. Well, not really even hanging, just middle of the plate down. But you know, Corey Dickerson likes that ball down and out over. How about that finish on the swing? And I like Todd. I like the way that he drew it out. No, there was no humping. Mm -hmm. It was a liner. Yep. See? No question about it. And I think his angle was exactly correct, too. <laughs> You're right. Down to third, Headley with the throw to first. The Rays are out in the sixth. But they add a run on a home run by Corey Dickerson. 23rd of the year there it is a spinner and out it goes
Down in the bottom of the sixth, on to the seventh we go. Reminder to follow Rays Baseball Live with the MLB.com at Bat app. You can stay up to the moment at any moment with game day, live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and always a lot more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Top of the order. Brett Gardner leads off for New York. Snell for five. Whitley worked the sixth, begins the seventh. And the pitch is inside. A curveball to begin this sequence of pitches to Brett Gardner. Gardner singled back in the first, has struck out and gone out pitcher first since then. 2 and 0. Oh. Strike. The call on the fastball away. Three and one. Number two hitter Jacoby Ellsbury next, and then Gary Sanchez. Foul ball runs at full. Boy, you'd like to face Sanchez with the bases empty. Well, yeah, especially in a game, you know, two to nothing, been tightly contested all night long. You can do your work here. Chopped to third. Throw to first, and it's picked over there by Schaefer. Kudo throws out Brent Gardner. Yeah, I wonder if he had trouble getting that ball out of his glove. He's coming off or coming towards first base, towards second base, really, at an odd angle, throwing back across his body. And this ball ends up in the dirt. Let's take a look. It's clean. Yeah, he pats it. Yep, just a low throw. Look at that. We got two looks at a grounder that Whoa. didn't even, it, there was not even a pick. Mm -hmm. But it's Niner. Yeah. You got to get him in the game. Yeah. One strike to count on Ellsbury. One out in the seventh inning. Back of first fair. Schaefer is going to take care of that. There's your perfect world, Dwayne. Yep. Base is empty here with two gone for Sanchez. And let's check in with Todd once again. Two ways to score that last one, just a three. Uh, some people write a three U unassisted, but I just like to keep it clean there. Okay, uh, we'll go through Gary Sanchez's at bats here tonight. Guys in the number three spot in the Yankees lineup. First inning after Gardner singled and Ellsbury moved Gardner to second. He struck out swinging first out of the inning. Next time he comes up in the third after Gardner and Ellsbury struck out and he walks. Eventually moves around to third after a single to walk. He takes a first pitch for a strike. And he bats again in the fifth inning. Walked with one out. Oh, I forgot to write the one out here. With one out he walked. Moved up to second base on the Billy Butler ground out who is the designated hitter. So he moves up via the 10. And he bats for the fourth time tonight in the seventh inning, officially 0 for 1 with a couple of walks. I get a time. See, out. There, there is the 10, the designated hitter in Todd's approach. 10 is the DH. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that going, what does 10 stand for? Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. You, you, I am I'm saying that you're not a fan of that. Well, or that's not your style. No, it did. It, it, it works for Todd because he recaps it flawlessly every time we go to him and it works for him. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to visualize the DH as the extension of you know the one two three four five six seven eight nine. Yeah. It's a DH. Yeah. And 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 on my end 
2 2 is fouled a long way up the right side out of play. When I'm looking to recap an inning and I look down and, and I see 10, and I'd see 10 in the scorebook, I think, what does a really, really good looking woman have to do at the top of the fifth? <laughs> you got, I don't have any idea. You got, I've seen that movie. Yeah. <laughs> there you you know. get it. Yeah. What, what, did, what, what did that cutie pie have to do with getting Sanchez to second? Yeah. Ground ball shortstop. This is Miller. Out of time in the throw to first, and it's uh, one, two, three, three ground ball inning for Whitley. Seventh inning stretch, two nothing Rays. Seventh inning at Tropicana Field tonight. Here's what's coming up tomorrow on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Chris Archer on the mound for the Rays, and we'll hear from the Rays right hander, Archer, after his ninth win. And a feature on the late and great Roberto Clemente. New pitcher is Luis Severino. Sessa worked six. He gave up a couple of runs, including the sixth inning home run to Corey Dickerson. Walked a couple, struck out six. And here's Severino to face Caracudo. Well, Girardi's got to be happy with the job that Sessa has done. Just nothing offensively going for the Yankees yet here tonight. And now you give way to Severino, who's found himself in the starting rotation, back to the minor leagues, back up to, and now in the bullpen. Got very good stuff. Yeah, we have uh, seen tonight in Sessa and now Severino two uh, very good arms in this New York uniform. It's one and two now. All the way to the backstop, so the count is two and two. I think Gary Sanchez thought that he had framed that beautifully, trying to just just catch that baseball in the bottom of the glove, and it wasn't even there. Full count. Kudo has grounded out to second and struck out. Richie Schaefer is on deck. Fouled out of play. Oh. 
And that will be strike three called at the knees. First strikeout for Severino. Second time Caracudo has gone out on strikes tonight. Now he comes in and it's down and in right there at the borderline. Caracudo thinks that that is ball four. Take that ball, see it down right on that borderline, and the call goes against him. To Schaefer. No ball, no strikes. One and one. Schaefer walked back in the second. There's a homer and three runs batted in. Five of 32. And that puts him behind in the count. A ball, two strikes. Fly ball toward right center. Hicks tracks this one right into the glove. So two away. Mikey Montuk heads to the plate with the bases empty and two gone here in the seventh inning. Clocked at 97. One ball, no strikes. One and one, more heat. Yeah. Well, that's the one thing that that being in the bullpen now, a plus for Severino. He can cut it loose. Not going to be out there like a starter and have to pace yourself five, six, seven innings. He can come in and, and let it fly, and that's where you get that. That <laughs> velocity that continues to climb through this at bat. Now he starts at 97 and then increases from there. One and two. Where he's got a run in the first. Brad Miller driving in Logan Forsyth with a base hit. Home run in the sixth inning by Corey Dickerson. That one up, says Lance Parrott. Up in velocity, too. That was 99. <laughs> the Rays get Alex Calame limbering in the bullpen. To fouls this one out of play. Not a lot of time to make a decision on that one. She hits 99, pushing 100. And that is strike three call. How about that? After all the hard stuff, little slider. We go to the eighth, two nothing Rays. the really fun days we had here and really one of the great days in baseball was the final day of the regular season in 2011 
Well, at one point, as you know, the Rays were down seven to nothing in this game. And then came that six run eighth with two outs. Evan Longoria connected on the first pitch of that at bat hit a home run to left center field to cap that six run inning. Finally the issue was resolved in the 12th when Evan Longoria on a 2 2 pitch lined that ball just inside the low fence inside the foul pole for the deciding home run giving the Rays a trip to the postseason and an 8 to 7 victory in 12 innings. Well that was a special day and uh, you can see the totals a little messy because it ended suddenly on that shot down the left field line by Evan Longoria down in what is now the 162 landing. That was a fun day around the game of baseball and certainly for the Rays as Evan propelled them into the postseason. Whitley still out there opening the eighth inning and the first pitch is a strike to Billy Butler. Oh. Oh, two now. Marquardt up for the second time has joined Colome. Foul. Butler swinging a good bat since joining the Yankees. One for three tonight. And he is now seven of 17 in a New York uniform. Not a bad transition at all. This went past Schaefer. Another hit to right by Butler. So he is two for four. Well there you go that's the uh, Brian Anderson scorebook and look how neat that is. Well it, it, it's not neat that the one thing that I'm proud of is I've got every square that has been supposed to be filled in mm -hmm. has has been filled in tonight. You've needed very little help over your shoulder <laughs> but it's also very I mean this is as basic as you get. There's nothing fancy about it. Yeah now look now look at this, this is a book. This has got notes. It's tough to read because you fit a lot in there. You've got little cues, little pitching change stuff here. Yeah, that's that the pitching change. Mm -hmm. It's one and one, and we try to keep track of the uh, of the pitches. Like in the eighth inning here, it's uh, one and one on Teixeira. It's down and in, and so it runs to two and one up in the left hand ah, corner are. here, right, right, right up here. So it just gives you a nice frame of reference to know if there's a point in the game where something happened that was significant a hit, go ahead hit, what the count was. Sometimes that's pertinent. And that's a strike, and we'll even the count at two and two. Lead off base hit. Man on, nobody out. 2-2-2 two, two, two to Sharon. Remember now, he had that long at bat earlier in the game against Snell from the right side, facing Whitley here, and he takes a cut, fouling it back on the fastball. Holding the count to two and two. Five innings for Snell and Chase Whitley. With two innings plus. The count's going to go full. Uh, he's put together some veteran at bats, taking close pitches, working deep counts, like you just mentioned. Oh. And he got him. Mm -hmm. Off speed. And a nice job right there. Picking up the strikeout. The second strikeout in this stint. Both have come on this, the changeup. Yep, and look what he did, though. He started that pitch on the plate and then the action. You know, it's elevated, so 
Teixeira gets a good look at it. He thinks that that's a fastball out over the heart of the plate, and then all of a sudden, change of speed, little change of direction, sliding to the outer edge and just off, and he picks up the strikeout. That's a that's a big time pitch in a big spot. And here's Chase Headley, the first man Whitley faced tonight when he struck him out on a 2 2 change. Headley fouls a fastball out of play for a strike. Well, it wasn't that long ago the Yankees had Chase Headley, Chase Whitley, Chase and Shreve. Had a lot going on. Yeah, that was, uh, it was not allowed. And so <laughs> the Rays have Chase Whitley. <laughs> We're trying to break that up. 0 2. Broadcasters filed a direct challenge to that, a complaint. It is funny when you get into a new city, especially in September, and you get a lot of call ups and you're you're in there doing the pronunciations and trying to figure out these names. Yep. You gotta be honest with you, when when, when I saw that Uniel Kirakuto was getting called up mm -hmm. and you see it in print yeah. you're like uh oh yeah you get this is gonna be the better part of the afternoon getting <laughs> this one right <laughs> we did get a little uh, sneak preview of him in spring training yes it's just down it's a ball and two strikes one on one out The pitch count on Whitley. Ooh, there's a strike call. He gets him looking. So that's strikeout number three for Whitley. This one on a fastball. Two outs in the eighth. Boy, look at him stay behind that pitch, drive it outer half. That's a good pitch. Well, two outs, and the Rays are going to make a pitching change. Leading two to nothing. Two guys both coming back from Tommy John surgery and they have uh, spent some time together and you you have to believe that uh, in this case they're going to affect each other but Cobb and Whitley that that's a that's a nice combo right there. They're going to be friends for a long time. Yep. With what they have gone through together just you know we've talked about it before. And you think about all the stuff that goes behind the scenes to be able to come out and perform like they have. They're going to be tight. Well, Alex Colome makes one pitch and he gets Gregorius. Rays lead 2 0, mid eight.
Our T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball is a recap of tonight's game, and this is our scoring the game broadcast, and this is the race side. The Yankee side doesn't have a lot in terms of base hits and runs scored. In fact, zero in the runs scored column. But for the Rays, look at the, the red numbers. They made it one nothing on a Brad Miller single in the first inning, and they would make it 2 nothing in the sixth inning on a Corey Dickerson solo home run. It came on the first pitch. That's the count right there. And after he had struck out the first two times in the game. So there you see uh, some of the highlights of tonight's game. And I learned something new, guys, about the uh, review. Kevin Kiermaier thought he had a stolen base back in the third. But as Dwayne said, he uh, notates the review. So for the first time ever on my score sheet, a little R. Back to you. Well, feel good about that. Contribution for the night. Come on, Dwayne. You knew you were going to affect the outcome of tonight. <laughs> Somehow, some way. Ooh, a swing and a miss by Forsyth on the fastball. That went up 98 99. I mean, think about what you have introduced to the game of baseball here tonight. You, you've changed the way that Todd Cowell scores the game by putting a little R in their review. You, you've created a new stat in bases saved because of Kevin Kiermeyer. I mean, this has been a big night for you. Uh, and I knew that the moment that I saw you in that tie. When I saw that tie, I knew tonight was going to be big. Hey, here's Kiermaier with another hit. Big lucky. night for him. You're lucky. He is three for four. Yeah, well, let's just keep talking about Kiermaier. Well, that, there's your guy. There's, there's your guy going the other way, yeah. which is what you'd like to see. You think about Kiermaier using the whole field with his speed, especially in the position that he's hitting in. And by the way, he's been doing a great job up there at the top of the order. And now Evan Longoria to face Severino. There's Todd's scorecard with uh, Kiermaier wow. three for four. First pitch is a strike to Longoria. Reds would like to add to this two run lead moving into the ninth inning. Instead of ground ball third, Headley to Reyes one, first base two, five, four, three. The double play ends the eighth, and we'll go to the ninth. Two nothing, Tampa Bay. Rays, Rays honoring Chris Archer as the team's nominee for the Roberto Clemente Award this year. And they have a great deal for you to be a part of the celebration. Upper level tickets for the Rays game against the Red Sox Friday. Now just $21 for a pair. Call 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com slash Clemente to get your tickets now. So Boston in tomorrow. Night games Friday, Saturday, the day game on Sunday. Aaron Hicks to lead off the ninth for New York. Hicks to Reyes and Gardner. This one headed toward the middle. 
and over the bag into center field. Hicks has his second hit. Colomace throw two pitches. He got Gregorius on one pitch on a fly ball to end the eighth, and now base hit to open the ninth by Hicks. You kind of wondered how that ball missed Alex Colomay right over the rubber, right over second base. And now you got to go to work. Reyes takes the pitch for a ball. Fly ball into right. And that's caught by Monto. So that's the first out of the ninth inning. We'll take a look at the pitching matchups in the Boston series. Tomorrow it will be Drew Pomeranz against Chris Archer. Matt Andres opposes Rick Porcello on Saturday. And then Sunday, Jake Odorizzi against Eduardo Rodriguez. We'll be with you tomorrow at 6.30, 5.30 on Saturday, 12.30 on Sunday, and then the Rays hit the road for their final road trip of the year. Brett Gardner. Pitch is a strike. Gardner single to open the game and was stranded eventually at third base. And a nice stop by Casali. One and one. With the base hit by Hicks, the Yankees have out hit the Rays tonight, 8 7. The Rays up 2 to nothing. Chop right side, and Colomay gets over to first just in time. Going in head first, Gardner, Laz Diaz on the call. And let me tell you something. That was a great job by Richie Schaefer with the amount of, uh, of oomph that he put on the little option pitch. If he lobs this there, Gardner's going to get there. But watch him take a quick peek and then put something on it and get that ball to Colome in time to get the foot to the bat. That was a, that was a nice nice feel right there by Richie Schaefer. A quick look and then get it there. Didn't lob it. There was no hump in that. He got that ball there quick, and that allowed Colomay to find the bag. So Hicks up to second with two outs. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury. Ellsbury, one out of four. This one is a strike and bounds away. Over to third goes Hicks. So it's a strike on Ellsbury. So there's a wild pitch. And that ball caught. You know, Casale's trying to smother, but it catches his right wrist and shoots out of there. Wow. Tom tracking the inning. He's got the wild pitch moving Hicks over. Up the right side, foul. I'm mean, out of play. Watch your lips in the stands. We see a couple of these a night. 
must be heads up. So Colome trying to close it out. Jonesbury down 0 2. He's never had a hit off Colome. 0 for 5 against him. And he pulls this one foul. Ricocheting back out to Tony Pena. Snell, two and two thirds for Whitley. Calame, an inning so far, trying to get the last out. Way wide. Now one and two. This time by Colome. One, two. In the center field. Kiermeyer's there. Rays win it. Colome closes it out, and the Rays are winners tonight. It's a two to nothing final. The Rays staff will get its eighth shutout of the year. For the Rays, two, seven, and one with four left for New York. 0 8 and 0 with 11 left. Snell will get the win. Blake Snell is 6 and 8. The 35th save of the year for Colome. The loss goes to Sessa now 4 and 3. The two hours and 37 minutes to play this game before 13,355. Let's check in with Tom one more time. All right, Dwayne, we'll give you a little overview of the whole night here on our scoreboard. Uh, you can pretty much see it tells the story of a pretty clean game by the Rays pitching staff with the shutout. Uh, Gardner got to third base in the first inning on a pass ball when Billy Butler was batting, but then a strikeout and a pop up end of the inning. That ended their, their big threat in the first. And after that, zeros from Blake Snell all the way through five. Then Chase Whitley comes in, zeros through two and two thirds innings that he pitched. Alex Colome in the eighth. And here's the ninth, guys. A single. You get a fly out to right by Torres. I like B.A.'s influence on the nice play by Richie Schaefer, so it reminds me to write the word nice up there, uh, looking for a good defensive play at the end of the game, and then a line out to center field to end it. So there you go. Cl pretty clean game by the Rays pitching staff tonight in a 2-0 Rays victory. We'll have more on this in our Rays live postgame show presented by Checkers coming up. We'll also hear from Kevin Cash and from the Rays clubhouse, including tonight's starting pitcher, Blake Snell, guys. And glad to know that uh, this game was not without the influence of Brian Anderson on Todd's scorecard. Rays win it. It's a shutout, 2-0. They knock off the Yankees. And they'll take on the Boston Red Sox tomorrow for Brian Anderson, Todd Callis, and the rest of our crew. Dwayne Stats, hope you've enjoyed the telecast as the Rays are winners. With you tomorrow at 6.30. Now, Rays live the postgame presented by Checkers comes your way next.